This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's community access radio station Plains FM 96.9 and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. It's time for Emergence News on Plains FM 96.9, Citizen Made Radio. Hello and welcome to Plains FM and I'd like to thank Plains FM for allowing us to do Emergence News. This is Emergence News and with me in the studio at the moment, uh, Nigel. Hi there, John. Nigel and Peter. G'day there, John. Uh, And we are in the business of doing all sorts of things, actually. In this radio studio, um, but what's this your, is what's your task today? <laughs> <laughs> this is part four of what's in it for me when it comes to the emergence of my trayer and the spiritual life. And we're getting good feedback on this series, yeah. aren't we? So yes, we thought we we'd better do part four. Yeah, um, we talked about part four, but we not sure if we'd do it or not. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing the intro, and I've entitled it "Hope and a Hand," and I guess if you're seeking some hope, a hand is handy. Ah, helpful. Okay. I am concerned, eh? We talk a lot on this program about what could be seen as bad news, but we're not in the business of bad news. Some of what we talk about will be frightening, but we're not here to scare. Our job is to offer you, our listeners, an element of good news. And I sometimes wonder if we're doing that well enough. My personal position is let's find out the truth and then work from there. That requires some research. It requires some open-mindedness. I'm reminded that Benjamin Krem once said that an open mind is the rarest thing on planet Earth. It requires the ability to change our mind about things. It requires the suspension of the polarisation of our thinking. And by that I mean when you hear one point and immediately rush to its polar opposite to combat it. Or you espouse a thought and the other party you're talking with starts playing the what-if game as though your idea is complete, non-negotiable and the final word on the matter. We have a confrontational process going on on the planet at the moment. It seems to appear almost everywhere. It's tiring. These are times of extremes. We are using extreme debating methods when consensus, respect, perspective and evidence should be the terms of our conversations. So, we're not here to scare. We are here with another voice. We are here with good news. It is, however, wrapped up in the idea that we are witnessing the collapse of a civilization. It is founded on the idea that the current way we manage this planet is not working, environmentally, economically, or emotionally. We're in a bit of a state. And if we keep thinking the same way, we'll continue this decline. We are bringing you the idea of change. We believe it's good news. We believe we offer hope. We are a group of volunteers. We have a global message for these times. We are informing you of the emergence of a world teacher. He is the teacher for this age. His name is Maitreya, and he is the Lord of Love. Do some research. Do some reading. Have a look at what is really happening on this planet. Then you decide for yourself. So continuing our theme of what's in it for me, let's talk about what this emergence can offer you in the way of assistance. Now on this program, um, um, Peter and Nigel and I have talked about energy and we've talked about that Maitreya is a master of energy and especially of a unique type of energy, the energy we call love. He is the anchor for love of love on this planet. He is available to you. His energy is available to you. He needs your help to instigate his mission. For this emergence to be complete, my trier needs the tiny receptacle that you are to be available to his energy. You have a symbiotic relationship with the most advanced being on this planet. He needs you and your assistance to bring about change on this planet for you and your people. Maitreya is also the wielder of the Christ principle. You are a carrier of a spark of that Christ principle. By allowing Maitreya into your heart, 
that spark of the Christ principle already embedded in you will begin to grow. You will grow. By working with Maitreya, you complete him. By allowing Maitreya's energy to nourish your centres, you will grow. The Lord of Love, the teacher of angels and men alike, the avatar of this age, needs you. He holds out his hand to you. Just take it. I have a photocopied photo of Maitreya's hand in front of me. It's available to all. It is his calling card. I'm going to read the back of it. This photograph shows a miracle of great significance. It is the handprint of Maitreya manifested on a mirror in Barcelona, Spain. Not a simple handprint. The image is three-dimensional in appearance, similar to the print on the Turin Shroud. The image of the hand also has extraordinary healing properties. When you place your hand over it, or simply look at it, you are in effect calling forth Maitreya's help, blessing or healing, whatever is possible within karmic law. Same effect can be produced even with a photocopy of this image, which I'm holding now. Until he emerges fully and we see his face, this is the closest that Maitreya can come to us. It is a photo of his hand. He is offering his hand. Use it. Okay, now, Peter, you've talked about um, using the hand in the past. How have you used it? Yes, uh, well, I have used it, um, John, to, um, you know, connect in a deep way with uh, with my trailer if I'm asking for help. And um, I certainly have at various times asked for help. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's always been forthcoming. Right. I use it almost daily. In fact, it's one of my rituals. As I'm climbing into bed and going to sleep, I'll have the card and, and I have my hand on the card. And um, I've certainly had some very, very good responses with it. When I was giving talks at the Mind Body Spirit Festival, I, I always hand the card out and I had someone in the audience yell out, Hey, my hand's getting hot. Yeah, that's right. You were there, Nigel. I kind of went, oh, how do I explain that? Well, there were about three people that reported that they said yeah my hand is actually getting really hot yeah. it's getting really warm yeah and and heat the is, energy was building yes heat is the signature sometimes of energy mm. so yes it works it is a gift you can work with the master of masters just by taking his hand if you want to do something for the world for your people take the hand so guys that's the hand it's the hand of my trayer and is available to all. It is your right to take the hand of Maitreya. It is your right to use the energies of Maitreya. So where can you find this hand, John? That's a good where question. Can we go? we, we've got heaps of them printed off, and I, I carry them in my bag all the time. I've got about 50 in my bag at the moment. Uh, it's a man bag. You know, it's it's acceptable to be carrying it around. It's it's really masculine looking. I think I just <laughs> want to tick that off with you guys. I see you're both looking at me. What's this bag you're both saying? Okay, it's a man bag. Right? It's in my man bag. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are spiritual festivals at Heaton Primary School, uh, Hill Morton Primary School, the one on Sparks Road, and out at Rangura where we have stands and this, these um, hand cards are available. If you Google the hand, my trayer's hand, you'll find copies of it. If you go to the Share International website, you'll find copies of it. And in most of them at Share Mags or Share Books, mm. there is um, photocopies of this hand. And I guess if people are really interested in getting it, we could leave some here at the counter of the radio station. Could we do that? We could do that. And also... Um, we could talk to our producer about it. Yeah, Peter. We have be. a producer. <laughs> I love saying that to people. We have a producer. My producer, I say. <laughs> <laughs> and also on uh, Monday and Wednesday nights, if you if you ever want to come along and try transmission meditation, we have the hands available, available there too. Yeah, that's in Christchurch. We're not in LA. That's in Christchurch at 190 Worcester Street, 7 o'clock Monday and Wednesday evenings. Cool. Great. Thanks, guys. It's a pleasure working with you. The bag is cool. Okay. Peter, you're next. Okay. I'm looking at um, spirituality, um, spirituality in life is not necessarily religious in nature, but it embraces the things we talk about on the program, like living a harmless life. This is not meaning that you produce nothing, but that all you do is for the good of everything in the world. So 
it's really a point of focus, I suppose. It can be as simple as moving from competition to cooperation, which is perhaps not always simple, but um, it's the way we need to go in the future. Mm -hmm. I would like to read a piece by Benjamin Krem from his book, The World Teacher for All Humanity. Maitreya's Teaching. Maitreya's teaching demonstrates and affirm the interconnectedness of everything in the world. This is the rationale of the law of karma, the law of cause and effect. Recently in the United States, there was an earthquake measuring 4.9 in the east. This is a few years ago, I must add, in an area that is not normally prone to earthquakes. Through the Midwestern United States, Kansas and the central states, there were hundreds of tornadoes, one after the other, leaving paths of destruction 400 miles wide and killing many people. These are called acts of nature, acts of God. But they are, in this case, a result of the law of karma. The crisis that manifested itself as the SARS infection in China and elsewhere, for example, the epidemics of flu throughout Europe, are direct results of the fear generated from the crisis of conditions set up by the US attacks on Afghanistan and Iraq. It's not a question of God punishing the aggressor, it is simple law of interconnectedness of all atoms in the universe. What happens here sets up something that will inevitably happen elsewhere by the law of action and reaction. When humanity truly understands this law, the law of karma, not just as an intellectual idea, it will see that everything, every thought, every action sets in motion a cause or causes. We'll be less careless, won't we? Yes, you know, it takes... With our words, our actions, mm, exactly our right. thoughts. Mm. Mm. It takes a lot sometimes for us to actually twig uh, the ramifications of the law of action and reaction, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, we sort of uh, take it on board karma and we sort of think that it's something that happens to them. Or I, I, I sometimes look, karma is in the common lexicon there, isn't it? People talk about karma, mm. but we don't talk about how you can... Um, mitigate yeah. or lessen change your karma or, or, or change it, it, duck it, dodge it. Yeah. Uh, and I guess one of the ways you can change that karmic pattern is harmlessness, right? Yes. Mm. Which yes. is what you talked about in a couple of programs ago. And we don't even need to to bypass it. We can create good karma. In fact, yes. most karma is good karma. I'm going to hug you later. <laughs> hoping that will generate some good karma. Because I did some pretty <laughs> awful things this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the need for harmlessness in every action in our lives becomes apparent. When we act, we have to know that the result of that action could be, if the action is destructive, it produces destruction in the world. If the action is non, not destructive, it is creative. It is harmless. It creates harmlessness. It creates good in the world. We have our evolution in our own hands. We are responsible. Every act, every thought is part of the thoughts and actions of all humanity and affect all humanity. We cannot imagine how far our thought proceeds before it returns to us as a reaction to a cause. Mm. And this is what we don't really understand, isn't it? It's just really, um, we sort of give lip service to it and we think, oh yeah, okay, fine. But <laughs> looking at it in an analytical way, we need to realise that it is literally true. Mm -hmm. When humanity's thoughts and actions are destructive, we create thought forms of destruction, attack, killing and fear. We generate, therefore, thought forms that impinge on the forces of nature. These forces are under the control of the devic or angelic evolution. They go out of equilibrium, as we are out of equilibrium. And earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, typhoons are the results. And so we actually cause these things, these disasters, this climate change. This, mm -hmm. And this is how we do it, mm -hmm. by our instability, our emotional immaturity, you might so, say. Toxic thinking yeah, creates right. a toxic environment. Mm, exactly. If we understood the damage that we do to the devic evolution, yes. I think we'd be a bit more careful. That's right, yes. And, uh, you know, perhaps unfortunately we're, we're um, sort of out um, 
to lunch as it comes with understanding the yeah, well we're so we conditioned mean. we're so conditioned with what we can see mm. that what we can't see such as energy for example mm-hmm. mm. we dismiss it as coincidence mm. hearsay mm. Mm. but if we actually understood the law of karma and mm. it's all about energy as you said before action and reaction mm. then we would be more careful and more considered in yeah. Our thoughts, our, our spoken word. And Definitely. that's one of the ways that we can help ourselves. So the emergence mm. of Maitreya, the teachings of Maitreya around this karmic model, mm. once we start getting our heads around it, it's another way that we can say, this is what's in this for me. Yeah. I can actually change the way the world reacts to me by changing how I think and behave. Mm. Yeah. So... Everybody in the world, without exception, is looking for, aiming towards, longing for the experience of unity. Equilibrium reflects the underlying unity of all people. But our modern world is built on competition, the opposite of equilibrium. You have to win. You have to do something better, cheaper, quicker, more aggressively than somebody else. Everybody is locked into competition. And they do not give their intuition the room to breathe, to live, to give them the sense of their own longing for unity. And it's a real seed of fear too, isn't it, competition? It is. Mm. Mm. Yes, it is. It's nice stuff, Peter. Thank you very much. This is the Emergence News on Plains FM. For more information, go to shareinternational.org. Thanks very much, uh, Peter. That's really good stuff. Nigel, um, what are you going to do for us, buddy? I'm going to talk about the prayer for the new age. You spoke about the hand earlier, yes. John. Yeah. And another tool, or something that uh, uh, another tool that has been released as a gift to humanity by Maitreya. Love that term, gift. I was just thinking exactly the same thing. These are gifts. Mm, mm, absolutely, if we use them. In fact, I'm going to reach for another gift. I've got my bottle of Tecloti water here, and I'm going to take oh, the a tablet. tablets. Yes. Ah. Yes. We, we, we've got stuff. If we've got, if we've got time, we'll talk about that. Okay. Too. Cool. Yep. So, but before I start uh, talking about the prayer for the new age, I'd just like to talk about a uh, dictionary definition. The word avatar. It's a Sanskrit word. Means literally coming down from afar, far away, coming down with the approval of the higher source from which it came with benefit to the place at which it arrives. That description of an avatar is important. Why? Because we are living in the time, as John said earlier, of an avatar, Mm -hmm. a heavyweight. Mm -hmm. The avatar is Maitreya, the Christ and the world teacher. Now his influence is currently guiding us out of the present chaotic conditions. Today's program is titled Maitreya, What's in it for me? Part 4. Now the idea behind this series is to present to you a number of teachings and personal development tools that will assist you, help you, empower you to understand the challenges that lie ahead of us, such as the breaking down of our old political and economic structures. So we need to start thinking differently, and we've just been discussing that. We need to think differently, more cooperatively. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we need to consider the wise counsel from this avatar, Maitreya. In time, even those who most oppose the changes that are required will finally enter the field of labour for the common good. They have to. Why? Because our world must be rehabilitated as Greta Thunberg, that young 16-year-old, has said, speaking directly to the European politicians. And my word, she's a firecracker, isn't that young lady, isn't she? Maitreya does not come alone, but he is the senior member of a group known as the Masters of Wisdom. Until now, from behind the scenes, he and the Masters have worked on our behalf, watching over us for, it's about, Peter, what, 17 million years, the spiritual hierarchy have been yeah, working say, on our yeah, behalf? 18 and a half million mm. years ago that we were first, um, you know, actually individualised as um, souls in incarnation in an animal body. Mm. And it's where the inspirations and the teachings are released to humanity. Mm. Now, the tool I was going to talk to you about is called the Prayer for the New Age. It was released by Maitreya, and it's really an affirmation with an invocative effect. 
What does an evocative effect mean? You're bringing in the energies of the deity. You're invoking the energies. And You're inviting it. Yes, and it's different from prayer. Prayer um, supposes a different relationship, an unequal relationship. Prayer is um, asking the higher source. Emo emotional sort of yeah. response, isn't it? Whereas invocation is saying, I am due this. I, this is my right. Yeah. Um, and I'm part of the process. I'm, I'm invoking. Yeah, yeah. I'm invoking the energies. Yeah. Thanks for throwing to me for that, Nigel. I was poised, really poised there. So, <laughs> so we invoke those energies yeah. from the masters yeah. and Maitreya. Now, this prayer, if we use it each day regularly, we will gradually become more aware of ourselves being more connected with our environment, won't we? That's right. The planet and beyond mm -hmm. because we, it's interesting we were talking about the law of cause and effect earlier because it also um, I've certainly felt this benefit from using the prayer I feel mm. more connected with the law mm. of cause and effect with karma therefore you have you're more aware of the consequences of our thoughts and actions and this assists us to reduce fear Benjamin Krem, author Benjamin Krem, says there is nobody in the world who is free of fear, mm -hmm. except perhaps the self-realized masters. But that's quite a statement, isn't it? Mm. That to some degree we are all affected by fear. And there are several causes or several root causes of this. Usually the fear of death is the greatest fear, and that's a result of our conditioning. Because we, we tend to separate death from life. Mm-hmm. That's one of the great illusions, isn't it, Peter? Mm. Well, separation is the number one sin. Mm. Krem also says our education systems are based on encouraging competition. We are encouraged to compare ourselves competitively with everyone, everything, even every situation that we meet. Krem believes this competitive response engenders fear. And we see this poison on a political level. That's where it's most obvious, but it's in the economic sphere as well. Just look at the share market. Yet we engage in it, don't we? Mm. We suffer, strive, compete, all different actions, some positive, but some deeply negative. Competing against each other will never fulfill, though, the needs of all people. Krem was asked back in 1993, is this prayer for the new age a way to invoke Maitreya? He, mm -hmm. Krem says, yes, the masters respond to prayer. That is how prayer is answered. The masters are wide awake. They never sleep. They hear every prayer. Whether they can answer depends on the strength of the invocation on what proportion of the emotional or mental matter the prayer is wrapped in. Isn't that a beautiful description? That is interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it depends what proportion of mental matter the prayer is wrapped in. The higher the mental matter, if it's wrapped in more mental matter, the, you know, where we're talking about yeah. the higher centers so rather the than, the, center, mm, rather than the emotional. Yeah, mm. the diaphragm. Mm, the yeah. masters can work on the mental plane much more effectively. Mm. So remember, men, and also remember this, many prayers are answered, but we don't always necessarily recognize the answer. <laughs> the other thing that comes to my mind is be careful what you're asked for. Yes. Yes, indeed. So the prayer for the new age, it's a powerful tool. We encourage you to say it aloud or inwardly, mm -hmm. concentrating on your Ajna center. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's between the eyebrows. Yeah. Gradually, your mind will grasp the concepts. Your focused will will activate these concepts and the mantram, the prayer, will begin to work. And as we've just discussed earlier, the three of us here can attest to this. If this short prayer is said each day, there will grow inside you a realisation of your true self. Yes. Now, where can you find this prayer for the new age? I say just Google it. Or visit the Share International website. There's two of them. There's yep. an international website and there's also a Share International New Zealand website where you'll find the prayer for the new age. Seven lines. It's yep. easy to learn. Yeah. You use it every day, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Driving to work, actually. Uh, and I keep my attention on the Arjuna Centre when I'm doing it. I, I tend to use it when I'm exercising. So if I ever go for a run or I'm doing some weights or aerobics, I do the prayer for the new age. Wow. I've just got into a habit. That's when I, I say oh, it to okay, myself. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, I, it's the one thing that for me that I think I've, because I'm a fearful person, I was a much more fearful person, uh, and it's the one thing that I think that I've picked up that has given me some detachment or distance from my fear. I actually feel so much better when I'm using it. It also engenders a greater sense of self-responsibility. Yeah. That's another benefit yeah. that I've gained from I think the other thing too that I say to people is um, if you're at that point in your life where you're looking for change and you're following some philosophy that talks about um, affirmations, you know, let's get into some affirmations. It's kind of the buzzword. This is an affirmation. Mm. Use this as an affirmation because this talks about who you are. Very powerful. Exactly. Mm. Thanks, guys. All this information can be found on the Share International website, www.share-international.org. Scorpio Books in Christchurch carries the magazine and some books. And also don't forget the podcasts, which are available on the Plains FM website. We welcome your comments, questions and feedback. Please contact us at emergencenews at gmail.com. The opportunity to join our transmission is available Monday and Wednesday evenings and Thursday mornings, which gives us the possibility to do a service meditation in conjunction with Masters. Mm -hmm.